Hey guys, I'm excited to be with you all for chapel today. Uh, we're going to get started with a little worship. Um, we're going to have a new song, or a newer song that you may not have heard before, uh, but the words will be on there. Um, I encourage you to kind of sing along. It just talks about the things that God has done for us and uh, reasons that we need to praise Him. So, it goes like this. search the world but it couldn't feel me man's empty praise and treasures of faith are never enough then you came along and you put me back together Is now satisfied here in your love. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing, and nothing is better than.
shout your praise Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing Nothing is better than you yeah, I know it's true Hey students, uh, man we miss you guys uh, Miss seeing you in the hallway uh, Miss being around here with you uh, Know that you're doing really a great job with all your work Hear great things from all your teachers and. Uh, know that uh, you miss being here as well, but uh, we'll be together again soon. Uh, we know that for sure. Uh, Mark is where I want to read a verse or two from this morning uh, or this afternoon, whenever you're watching this. Um, Mark it, it gives us a great story of the life of Jesus. And then in his last chapter, it's the shortest of the four Gospels, he gives us a, a picture of what it was like after the resurrection. This last Sunday was Easter, and uh, I know as a pastor, I, I enjoyed getting to preach about the resurrection. I know that you enjoyed getting to hear about it from your pastor and your local church. Uh, what, a, what a hope that that gives us as believers. And so I want us to think about what happened right after the resurrection. And there's not a lot in Mark. It, it kind of ends pretty quickly. But there's one verse that I want to read to you this morning that I found something in that I think is kind of neat. This is in Mark chapter 16, and it's in verse number 7. And it says, but go tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. And there are four things I want to show you from this. And I use the word great, okay? Because um, I haven't used that word much lately. I haven't thought a lot of things have been great lately. I've been kind of discouraged about everything. But we have to remember that this gospel uh, that we have, this account of Jesus is the greatest thing ever. And that's what gives us hope, whether we're stuck at home or we get to come to school or whatever we're doing, it's still great to know that we have a hope in Jesus. And so I have four greats for you. And the first one is this is a great gospel. At the end of the verse, it says that, w that you will see him. And all that means for these guys that are hearing this is that Jesus was alive again. That's the gospel. That he died for our sins, but that he's not dead anymore, that he was resurrected, that he was brought back from the dead, that he rolled the stone away and left the tomb, that he, that he folded up his grave clothes and laid them aside and he walked out and he is alive forevermore and they were going to see him again. And that's what they say in this verse, there you will see him. That's the gospel. That's the hope that we have. That's the ability that I can know that I'll see my dad and I'll see my brother-in-law who I've lost and, and I'll see a lot of church members who have had to preach their funerals and many of you who've lost loved ones, you'll know you'll see them again. But beyond just seeing them again, we're going to see Jesus. We're going to see Him with these same eyes that I'm looking into this camera right now. I'm going to look and I'm going to see Jesus one day. And that's the hope of the gospel. That's the joy of the great gospel. And so whatever else is going on, that's good news, right? That's a great thing to know and a great reason to worship and a great hope that we have to get up and keep going through this life when things are really difficult. So we have a great gospel. We also have a great guarantee. Verse 7 says that we're going to see him again and, and he uses a phrase, Luke does, or Mark does, excuse me, just as he told you. Jesus had told the, the disciples and the ladies that follow him, the women that follow him, and really anybody who would listen if they would come alongside him, that he was going to go to Jerusalem and he was going to lay down his life, but he also said he was going to pick it up again. That no one took his life from him. He laid it down and he picked it up again is the way he describes his own life. But he told them about this numerous times and they didn't always understand it. Uh, they didn't get what he was t teaching them. They didn't understand in John 14 when he said that he was building them a house with many rooms. They didn't know what that meant. They, they kind of argued among themselves after that. 
But he had let this truth be known. He had shared it with them. And so what we're reminded of in this verse is that everything that Jesus said is a guarantee. It's going to happen. If Jesus said it was going to take place, then we can know for a fact that it will take place. It is a guarantee. And, and, and guarantees give us some normalcy in life. No, nothing's really been normal lately. I, my wife laughed at me this morning because I put on a tie. Because I got a new tie and I wanted to wear it to school. And I, I usually, if you see me at school, I'm probably wearing a tie because I like to do that. And so it's been crazy. And so it's just Coach Ellen and I here. No one else is in the room, so no one else likes my tie, but I wore it to school anyway. Why? Because that just kind of gives me a little bit of normalcy. I want those things. We, we like when we know what we can expect. And the world has been anything but lately. Well, Jesus is the one we can always know what to expect with him. If he says it, it is a guarantee. And so just as he had told them, the disciples were going to see Jesus again. And this verse reminds us of that. The third thing I want you to know that's great, great gospel, great guarantee, is a great gift. Verse 7 says that he is going ahead of you. Meaning that when they got to the place where Jesus told them to go, he was already there. That's a great gift for me to know that whatever I'm going to face, whatever's in front of me, Jesus already knows and he's already taking care of it. He's already making the way ready for me to walk in it. He's already laying out how my next steps are going to go. Right now in the world, if we're really honest, we don't know a lot of things that are going to happen. We don't really know what the next day is going to be. Uh, the last two weeks have been chaotic and we really don't know what the next two weeks will be like. But what we can know is that in every step, no matter what we're walking through, Jesus is already there. He's already taking care of it. And I want all of you as students to know that. That Jesus has your back. He's got your next step. He knows what's in front of you. He's already there and he's already got a plan for it. He is laying it out step by step. That is the gift that he gives us. Now he doesn't always reveal those things to us. But to me that's kind of part of the gift. Like when you're given something and you unwrap it, part of the excitement is seeing what's inside. It's called a present. Well, right now, all we have is the present. What we have right now, we don't know what the next step's going to be, but Jesus does, and he gives that to us. He continually opens that up for us so that we can see the next step. And here's the last thing that I want you to note from this verse. It's a great gospel, a great guarantee, a great gift, but there's great grace in this verse, and I want to read it one more time. It says, But go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. Why does it say his disciples and Peter? Well, the last time we saw Peter in the gospel, what was he doing? Three times he was denying that he even knew who Jesus was. In fact, one of the gospels tell us that the third time, it says he called down curses on himself in front of a little girl. He used really ugly language in front of a child, in front of a kid. And he, he had done a lot to, to harm his relationship with Jesus, right? He had done a lot of things to, to try to distance himself from this guy who was now going to go die on the cross. But Mark tells us that when Jesus was resurrected, he included Peter. There's grace there. You know, you might have completely blown it. You might have completely messed up. If you've been following Jesus and now with all this craziness, maybe something's happened and you've gotten way off track, this verse reminds us that no matter where we're at, there is grace for us from Jesus Christ. So there's always that chance for us through grace. And I just wanted y'all to know that this morning. Um, and I like that from this verse. It's the only one in the uh, end of the Gospels that gives us that little section about and Peter. So we have a great gospel, we have a great guarantee, we have all these great things. And I just want you to remember that. Even when times are kind of difficult, we still serve a great Savior. Don't ever forget that. I want to pray for you, and then we're, uh, we're going to be done today. Um, but I hope to see you all very soon. If there's anything at all I can do, please out, let me know. Email me, give me a shout. I'd be glad to help you in any way that I can. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for all of our students. I pray that you would watch over them in their homes during these next few days. God, just help them, guide them in all that they say and do, uh, and just help us all to remember these great promises that we have from your word. Father, we love you, we trust you, and we pray in Jesus' name, and all of common Christian would say, amen. Have a good and godly day.